man. Um, well done, man. Well done. Yeah, you got a done for your service in progress too. So nice. Great job, man. Yeah, putting the putting the training into action. Congratulations. Yeah, the done for you is is the done for you part of this is is where you can make a good amount of income as well. So awesome stuff. Um, I will right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, good to see everyone. The chat, I believe, is open. Let me like make sure I'm checking it. Okay. Uh, what's up, Nancy? What's up, what's up, everyone? Okay, so um, first things first, uh, CEO Life shirt is in production and will be shipped out to our shipping company. Everyone will be getting that shirt. So you guys have the laptop CEO shirt, but you'll also be getting the CEO Life shirt. Um, we do have good news as well. We have women's sizes coming also. So for our, for our ladies, we want to make sure that we, we accommodate everyone. Um, cause I know it's like a one size fits all, but I know how it is. My girlfriend's like, you better get women's sizes. I'm like, I know I, I will. I promise. So, um, we got women's sizes coming as well. So women and men, and we'll make sure when we have the CEO life shirt, ready to rock and roll that we'll get a form up in your membership area. So everyone can go and, uh, and fill out that form and we'll ship it straight to your doorstep. Absolutely free. No shipping costs. None of that stuff. We'll handle everything. Um, so that will probably be probably a couple weeks, Matt max that's on the long side. I don't want to over promise and under deliver, but I'm thinking about two weeks. It takes some time. we got a lot of them printed. Um, so we'll get those ready to rock and roll. Um, other than that, here's how it's going to work today. We're going to go into kind of a video training, getting on video. I see all of you are on video right now. Most of you are on video. Um, and today's training is going to be kind of getting comfortable getting on camera to an extent. Um, getting on camera, it's not required to make money online, not at all. Um, but it's important if you want to start building a brand with your audience and start, you know, putting yourself out there to an extent video is kind of how you connect with people on the internet. Like it's how we do it. Um, so today's train, I'm going to do a training on it, it's called rockstar video hacks. It's in the done for you. Plus I want to go through it um, from a live training perspective. So you guys can ask me any questions you may have. Um, but you also may have some questions about your funnels and things like that. If you do, let's save them to the end. I'll make sure to answer all of them or as many as I possibly can in the time being. Um, and then, yeah, sound good. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me sure I don't mess this up. Um, okay. So let me share my screen and let's make sure everyone can see my screen. All right. Can everyone see my screen? I can. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. So this training is based on being on camera, the scariest thing in the world. At least it was for me when I first got started. So before we go into it, I just want to show you guys, um, kind of my blooper reel. Mm, you guys have, may have seen this already. If you haven't, this is kind of for you. If you have, you can sit there and laugh again. I do curse in it. So I do apologize. Um, if you hear curse words, yes, there it is R rated on some of these things just because uh, it's part of me and I'm okay with the ramifications of that. But uh, I do want to warn in advance, there are some curse words in it just because that's what happens when you mess up on video. It's just one of those human things, at least for me. But I want you guys to understand that when you see someone on video, it, it's it doesn't always the end result might look easy, but to create that thing is difficult. And if you feel like you're in a situation where if you want to start flirting with getting on camera and start turning on that record button and pointing that camera at your face and you, you're a little nervous and a little uncomfortable at first, trust me, that is the most normal normalizing feeling in the world. So to begin this presentation, I want everyone to kind of sit back and relax and watch what it's like for me to fail over and over and over and over again on video. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Just jump right in. <laughs> Sorry. The order of the slides seem weird. <laughs> I need to, can I switch the Einstein one? And gotta do that again. Yeah. Fucking idiot, Blake. Hey, what's up, guys? In this, 
to make sure. We'll just start over. Maybe when the lights go down, everything. It could have been a fucking singer. Did you know that? Welcome to the social media lead, which that's, I can open it like that, right? Dude, I can't talk to you right now, man. Hurry up and get them all out. Marketers preach that you don't have a big... You want to come start it over so you don't have to like, this shit. Save me, bro. That's awesome. It's one of the most coolest things in the world. <laughs> Maybe you don't, but it is. Uh, hey guys, okay, awesome. Now that we've gone through the weak magnet funnel, and it was never here, wacko, 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 here, So that was my, fr that's uh, it's just how it is. I hope, you know, it's a warm and fuzzy feeling. So if you guys ever, I've, I, that's my vulnerability of me sharing with you guys that being on video and opening up video, it's not easy. Okay. If anyone ever claims it's easy, it's just, it's not. All right. It takes time. It's uncomfortable. You could see here. I'm like, that was me filming the actual product that you guys are selling. And it, it's tough, right? It, it, it takes a lot. It's just a lot of effort. And the point of this training is to kind of show you that a if you're nervous if you're worried about being on camera that's normal okay every time i turn on the camera there's that little bit of like nerve nervous feeling that occurs and b most importantly like how to start kind of like giving you the secrets to the tricks of the trade on what you can be doing to like start creating good video content because let's be honest when it starts we all kind of suck at it i still feel like i suck at it um but every day we want to strive to get better okay so this is rockstar video hacks and on today's presentation guys i'm gonna be going over some shooting tips okay starter equipment things you could be buying or purchasing or using okay um to get started how to deliver video content and then kind of like pro post-production little tricks and Start. tactics and Once magic things you can be doing um, how do yeah. you live? Guys, make sure your mics are muted if they're not, um, just because for obvious purposes. But anyway, okay, understand one thing about shooting good video is it's it's not easy, okay? Shooting good video is very difficult. It's not an easy thing to do, and that's normal. Like I said, like you might see the end result of someone's video, whether it's an ad, okay, or whether it's a promo video, or whether it's a Facebook Live. That stuff is it's not – don't – never stress if you're like, man, how are they so good on camera, Okay. When we all turn on the camera for the first time, trust me, we suck. All right. It's just it's how it is. Okay. And if, if you feel like, if you feel like you're better than, then you kind of have a knack for it. That's a good thing, right? It just means you're ahead of the curve. Okay. Um, but the good news is, is that it's worth it. Okay. Shooting good video is worth it because when you can create good video content, it's usually, it can be a direct ROI on, on your business. Okay. Great return on investment. Because like I said, when you're online and you're running an online business of any kind, right. Didn't matter what it is, right. The fact that you guys are in this program is amazing. Right. But regardless of what it is, having good video content is going to give you the ability to grow your business using the internet. Okay. Um, but first, um, let's start with a quick story about about my gigantic failure when I first got started and why we kind of brought video production in house. Okay. There was a, uh, we were working on this project. It was called funnel jackpot. No one's seen this before. Um, if you, some of you on right now might've recalled me talking about this in the past, but this was, this was an amazing funnel that my business partner Ace and I were working on. We were uh, creating this massive, massive uh, launch. We were going to do, we probably put four months behind this thing. It was insane. And we, we, we build this amazing funnel out and we wanted to do this really amazing promo video that we wanted to put here. You guys can probably look at it like your funnels, your online businesses look very similar to this. It's, it's a very popular funnel structure, right? And we're building out this, um, this uh, video. We need a promo video right here. That's what we had to look at. So we hired this expensive company. This is actual live um, footage of it. This is a speed roll. Um, of us setting up the set. We rented this massive studio here in Orlando. We hired a massive company to come out and put this on. We got that backdrop. We built a floor, like we built an entire set to uh, create this entire thing. And it turned out terrible. It was like the worst experience in the world. We were probably in for like $10,000 and it just did not turn out at all. Like the video footage came back bad. Everything was just bad. It was not a good experience. And that was the moment we're just like, F it. We're going to do it ourselves because we, we, 
we hired out this company. And what happens is what we saw is that we lost the vision, right? We have these ideas in our heads and you guys as entrepreneurs, you have these ideas in your heads and to communicate those ideas to a third party, it, it can become difficult. It just, it's never, what goes on in your head never comes out a hundred percent. That's not able to be transmitted a hundred percent to someone else's brain. And that's when we realized really quickly, that's what happened with that, that video. We worked our faces off to get this funnel up. And the most important piece of this funnel was that video. And it came out awful. Like we lost money on it. And that was the moment where like, you know what, we're just going to do this ourselves. So that's what we did. We bought all this equipment. Okay. Um, this is expensive equipment. I don't want anyone to go buy this stuff. Okay. I just want to show you kind of our deal with it is we decided to invest. So we bought um, the Sony a seven three camera, which is a very popular shooting camera. Um, it's actually the camera that's in front of me. I'm using my desktop camera now. Um, but it's the camera I shoot on. If you guys ever see me on a live or on the video content, we're using the Sony a seven three. We use a Tamron lens, um, uh, a DJI Ronin S, um, which is that thing you see right here that the camera's on. It's this really cool. Like it basically stabilizes the camera. So it's not all shaky when you're shooting content. And then a Sennheiser lav mic, which is kind of the wireless mics you see. Um, and those are the four things we really invested in for our equipment. And, that's when we say, you know what, let's go shoot our first actual piece of content. And this is the Key West video. This is located inside of your accelerator program, if you want like an example. Um, but this was like the first video we ever shot. We had no idea what we were doing, um, but we knew that we were going to become better at it. And we just we just went to Key West. We hopped in, in, in an, uh, we went to the airport, we booked a ticket. We just said, let's go somewhere. We went to Key West, packed our bags, got in, and we just made sure that we recorded everything we were doing. And that's what we did. So you see, I'm, I'm here being an idiot with the mic uh, and the camera, and we're just we're just shooting content. That's all we're doing. This entire video is learning how to like become our own like media company in a sense, right? Because that's we we knew it was a really important piece when it comes to marketing and 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 building a business online. Was just let's just start capturing all this content, and that's what we did. And that is when we realized that is how we we're going to proceed forward, and the rest is history. And to this day, we have. We've done nothing since, but shoot our own content. And it was the best decision we ever made because we are now able to effectively execute on the vision we had. We knew that in the beginning of it, we weren't going to be that good. So there was like kind of the trade-off was you can hire a company. They're going to be really good at shooting, but they're not going to have the vision that you have. They're not going to nail what you want. And the trade-off to that is that's the thing, but we knew that, okay, we might not be that good, but at least we have the equipment. At least we can do it ourselves. And at least we know that the vision is going to be executed. And that is when we realized that this video was a game changer, like doing this ourselves in house was a game changer. So um, if you're starting to shoot video or if you're inspired to start shooting video, right, you're going to get overwhelmed. It's just, it's how it is. And if you get overwhelmed, that's normal because that's how I kind of feel every day when I, when we turn on, you can see the Ronin S is right there. The, there's video equipment everywhere. It's just how it is. It, it can become overwhelming. Um, but it's okay because it, anytime you go through something, right? Like, have, has anyone ever read the book, The Obstacle is the Way? It's kind of how it is, right? You have to kind of go through. You can't go around or under or left or right. You have to kind of go through the pain to come out on top. And, and that's kind of how we do it. And we shot it. One the next video we shot was for one of our product launches. There was this Home Depot video, which was pretty cool. Um, I, we basically went into Home Depot. We brought the camera in. We had to like sneak it in because the Home Depot, uh, the store managers and stuff, they do not want you filming anything. So we had to kind of, kind of like sneak it in. And like, we had to set this up, right? Like it took time to like figure out how are we going to get these angles? How are we going to get the employee right there? Like where the, you know, cameras over here, employees there, like, and, and it was, it was tough. Right. But when you see the end result, it just looks easy. And that's what it takes. So this was like another video we shot, like, okay, let's see what happens. And we put this together. Right. Well, we did the next video was this like underpass video. This is a I'm here in Orlando and we they're constantly working on roads here. It's been this like way for like 15 years. They just don't know how to finish projects. And this was one of the roads they were working on. We like snuck again, we snuck in here. Um, and, and disclaimer, don't do anything like illegal. Like, like we came in, they just told us to leave, but don't do anything crazy. We just want to get a specific shot here. So you can see there's like this green fence behind me. So we were kind of scoping out this like, wow, this is really cool because I used to, funny enough, um, this used to be a parking lot and I used to sell stuff on eBay and Craigslist here um, when I was back in the day and uh, they got rid of it as a parking lot. And now it's just, they're like developing it even further. And that's what we did. So we found this really cool site to shoot our next video, which was right here. And same 
thing, just one camera, right? And I'm shooting a video and, and that's what we did here. Um, we did another one where I was in a family friend's backyard. You can see here, that's just me holding, um, I look like a pyromaniac over here. I'm holding a, uh, um, one of the oh God, gasoline stuff, whatever the, anyway, you throw it on the fire. So we're shooting this video here and we're shooting this entire thing right here. Like this whole thing was orchestrated. You can see the fire in my sunglasses, right? That's not by accident. That was on purpose. Um, there's a lot of things we did to get it right. And, and I think we had to buy like two full things of firewood. We're like, yeah, we'll be good. We just need like three pieces. It's a minute and 30 second video. It took us six hours to shoot. Cause it's just, it's just hard to nail everything on the first try. Right. Um, so, you know, we went through like two full things of firewood. I'm, you know, we have a light right here to get better lighting, but you know, the end result turned out amazing, right? Like if you could see this whole video, it was a, it was a really cool video to shoot. Um, and it was fun. It turned out really good. I think the whole video is, yeah, literally the whole video is 58 or a minute and like 20 seconds, right? Really short. Um, we did a plaque smash. So the two comic club awards that I have, um, which I, I want every one of you to get when you make your first million dollars with the sales funnel. Um, we wanted to smash it with a sledgehammer. That was one thing we did. And what's crazy enough is that you might just think, oh, you know, Blake, you know, they got this award and you just go buy a sledgehammer and you can smash it. Well, you can't because the two comic club award, we needed specific glass that shatters. So we had, we took the two comic club award. No one knows this story really like very small group of people. Um, and we actually had it fabricated. We had to drive three hours away to a, a glass manufacturer to custom create glass to put on this two comic club award so that when the sledgehammer hit it, it would shatter into like a bazillion pieces, right? So people just think, oh, Blake, you grabbed a two comic club board and a sledgehammer and you just, and you just smashed it. Yeah, that's, it looks that easy, but like to create that was really time consuming and difficult. There was, we had to pull this off. That's a heat gun because this two comic club award, when we tried to rip it apart, it completely destroyed these black gears on the award. So ClickFunnels, uh, which is the company, you know, I think all of us here are using or most of us to host all of our online business assets. You see these black gears, it's just part of their logo. Well, the second we ripped off the, the plastic, right? It ripped off all of the, all of the, uh, the gears with it. It's like a paint and it just ruined the award. So we're like pulling this off. We had to repaint these gears on, and then we had to go find a custom glass manufacturer to, to, uh, manufacture glass that would fit on this thing. So it'd smash into a million pieces. And then here we're on set. We had to build a custom thing here that it's like an easel that like holds the two comic club award, right? It was crazy, crazy, you know, amount of work to go into this thing. Right. But the end result was awesome because here we have the full video. This is the promo video where I'm walking with the sledgehammer and we have great cinematography here and it reveals the two comic club plaque and then boom, I get to smash and you can see that glass shatters into like a bazillion pieces. Right. And that's because of all the work we put in. You can see the smoke in the background here. Just every, it just turned out really cool. Right. And, and that's the result, right? And you might think like, you know, this takes time and experience. It doesn't guys. We like every day we're still experimenting with video. And I want you to know that anyone can do this stuff. Okay. Because we started out, I, I knew nothing. We didn't know a single thing. All right. And this was not that long ago. All right. It was not that long ago. Um, and, and like I said, every day we learn something new. Okay. But so, so I want to like kind of start with that is that like video is really important. It, it, it might look easy, but it does take a little time, but I promise you it's so worth it, especially if you want some inspiration on shooting videos. Okay. So let's start with some shooting tips, guys. Interesting location. You'll notice here, right? Look at the backgrounds of every video that I have, right? Every single one is not like just a normal background. They're very interesting, right? Here I'm on the cliffs of San Diego. Here I'm in the backyard with an amazing fire set. Here I'm on an underpath really cool, like grunge look here. I'm on a skyline right on top of a garage in the city of Orlando here. I got this like vibe going on with the ducks in the background. I got a lake here, right? All these different locations. I like to choose very interesting locations. All right. Because shooting interesting locations kind of brings your video to life. It puts this production value behind it. Okay. So if you're shooting any type of video content, right? Whether it's for some ads that you want to launch in the future, whether you're launching ads now or you want to launch ads in the future, right? Or even some of your videos, like when you get to the done for you plus and you want to shoot a video, okay? Or when you're putting up your funnel, when you're setting up your, 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 uh, your cart funnel, right? Some of you might have no idea what I'm talking about. It's totally normal. You will. Okay. But as you're setting up your funnel and you want to produce your own video, um, shooting 
shooting that video in a location will, will aid to, to the ROI on it and, and to the interest that people are going to have by watching it. It just brings it all together. Okay. So some things I want to recommend, find a lake or some water it creates a really beautiful scene. Okay. If you have a lake in your neighborhood or, you know, a really cool place to go to find water, like at the beach, it create, you'll notice a lot of people that are shooting ads and stuff. They have a really cool, unique background. Okay. Find a nature park. You guys know a park, a dog park, just something where it's just this really cool setting with beautiful trees or whatever. It's a great place to shoot or even like a rooftop skyline. I am fortunate enough to, I live in the city, right? So like we can't escape rooftop skylines. Um, so if you can find a rooftop skyline anywhere, like on top of a parking garage, or at least where it's in the background, that's a really cool vibe as well to shoot. Okay. So these are kind of three amazing places to shoot anywhere by lake or some water, nature park, rooftop skyline, right? Your brains might be going crazy right now. You might already be thinking of places, you know, exactly where you can shoot. Okay. Those are great places as well. Um, avoid shooting midday. Okay. Midday. Don't shoot at like noon or 1 PM. Even like two is a little weird because the sun's directly down on you and it casts really bad shadows. Okay. You want to be like lit up when you're shooting. Um, just so people can like see you, you like anytime something's like in really dark, like a really dark setting, it instantly looks like it's, it's too homegrown. It's just, it's almost like I'm not going to take it seriously. If I'm a viewer, right. Have you guys ever seen a video where it's just not lit up well at all? It's almost like you instantly discredit it. Even though the content could be amazing, you might discredit it just because the lighting wasn't there. So avoid shooting midday because the shadows are just terrible. All right. Um, shooting at sunrise or sunset are the best times. We try to shoot around 6 PM anywhere from four to 6 PM. Uh, we we see great sunlight and, and the same also goes for in the morning. Okay. So some of the video, if you ever see a video from us, chances are it was between four to 6 PM, um, right before sunset. And then also right at sunrise around, like, I don't know, not like at sunrise, but like seven, 8 AM in the morning. So those are great times because we call it the golden hour. Like the sun, it looks, you look amazing. Um, Shooting, if you're shooting inside, okay, like if you're live streaming, if you're doing a Facebook live, right, if you're shooting some ads with your iPhone or, or, or Android device or tablet, um, use as much natural light as possible, like open up the, sh open up the, the curtain, um, you always want the light, you always want to be facing the window, so the, like if, if I opened up a curtain, the light needs to be hitting my face, not the other way around, if it's the other way around, you're going to look, it's just going to be too dark. So always have, get as much natural light as possible and try and have that window face you because natural light, there's nothing like natural light. Like I'm in the studio right now and I have, um, I have two different style of lights on me. It doesn't even compare if we had natural light that could work out better. We're just, unfortunately our office is angled in a position where we don't get that well of natural light. Um, but if I did, I would just be using natural light because it looks so much better. Okay. Shoot during the day, obviously for, uh, light reasons like i said face a window okay and be aware of your backdrop all right you want and let me go back to that backdrops really important okay don't have like you don't and and this is for regardless of what you do when it comes to um shooting ads or video if you do a facebook live just make sure what's behind you is like organized all right. You don't have to have like this amazing set. Like that's not really what's important, but what is important, like make sure you don't have like a dirty hamper of clothes out or like towels hanging over your door. Like just make sure it's cleaned up to an extent, right? It just make sure whatever you're, you're behind is organized. If you want to shoot on a wall, right? If you, if you have um, a nice wall behind you with pictures or things like that, that works great. But the, the key is just be aware of what's behind you because I promise you your viewers take that into consideration, whether it's subconsciously or consciously, it's something that it, it hits us. Okay. So be aware of that as well. All right. Um, starter equipment. Okay. Here's some good starter equipment. This is not necessary. All right. Like honestly, what's necessary is your phone and that's it. That's all you really need. If you have a smartphone or a computer, you're in good shape. Okay. But I do want to show you guys what we bought as our starter equipment. Um, we bought the Osmo, uh, the Osmo phone stabilizer. It's this really cool thing. It's a handheld. Basically, you remember that Ronin, that big one I showed you earlier in this presentation, it's kind of the same thing, but it's for your phone. So it's really cool. It stabilizes your phone so you can hold it and walk and, and like nothing happens and your phone stays really steady. And it just, it really makes for good video quality. It's called the Osmo phone stabilizer. Really cool thing. It's a bit pricier. I think it's a couple hundred bucks or so maybe maybe like 150. I can't remember exactly. Not necessary. Okay. Um, just something to consider as you're, as you're developing your video content. It's a really good thing to have a ring light. Really cool. You can see the before and after when you have a ring light ring light creates that even light on your face. So if you're in a place where you're like, Blake, I don't have natural light. I don't have a place where I can shoot a ring light will solve that. You can get these like anywhere now. All right. And they're becoming super, super affordable. I think you can get them for like 60 bucks now. 
or so. Um, again, not required, but just something that can really help because it creates that even light and you just put it right behind your computer or right behind your camera. I mean, you can even see here, they have a place for your iPhone. So if you want to shoot on your camera and you want even light, a ring light is really good. All right. Um, we used to use what's called the sure mic, which is really cool because it would plug into your iPhone. I'm sure they have one for Android, but it was just this little mic. We, it's called the sure MV 88 mic. And we found it on Amazon and it creates really good audio quality. Your smartphones should have good in your computer. They like, I'm talking on my computer right now. I'm not even mic'd up and I'm sure the quality sounds pretty good. So technologies are obviously advancing more and more each day. So the, uh, the quality is probably pretty good as is, but if you want to take it to another level, we, you know, we got a mic here and it worked pretty good, um, for the time being. So that's kind of a great combination, right? You have a stabilizer. So your phone's not going crazy. You got even light and then you have good audio. So, so video lighting and audio, all three of those components together kind of create a, uh, a great combination. Again, not necessary at all. Just something I want you to know exactly what we had when we got started, right? Um, we, 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 where we had these things as well on top of the the other equipment that I showed you earlier. Okay. So that's good. Start equipment delivery. Now, um, four things to remember when delivering content, right? Everyone sucks at first. All right. It's okay. It's okay to be terrible. I used to, um, when I was first getting started, um, cause turn on that camera, right? It's like nerve wracking. You're like, Oh, people are going to judge me. They're going to criticize me. What's my family going to think? What's my, you know, friends going to think what insert reason to not record video. Right. Uh, and you got to remember, it's just, it is what it is. And it's okay to not be good at first. That's, that's normal. If you were great at first, that's awesome. Like that's, that's a rare thing to have. But if you feel like you're getting on, you don't know what to say and you don't know what to do. And you might, oh, what do I do with my hands? And, and, and what do I say? That's normal. Okay. That's perfectly, perfectly normal. Um, but as you do something again and again and again, you become better, right? That's, that's no new news. Everyone right now, you guys all know something you're good at. And you, I guarantee you were not that good at it when you first started, right? That's just how it is. Okay. So video is one of those things where you might have a little, little, um, anxiety built up inside, um, before you do it, but I promise you it, it's okay. We, we all are bad at first. All right. Practicing like crazy works well. I used to talk to myself in the mirror, right? The mirror is going to become your best friend. Um, so everyone, we all have mirrors at home. Find a mirror if you want and talk to yourself, right? It's a weird exercise, but you can see your movements. You can see how you carry yourself. If you're grounded in state, right? If you're controlling your breathing, right? Talk, pretend you're talking to someone. And when you see your reflection in the mirror, as funny and goofy as it is, it will kind of put you in that, but that's what it's like looking into a camera. Okay. When you talk to yourself in the mirror, that's exactly what it's like looking into a camera. So talk to yourself and pretend it's another person you're just communicating with. And you can practice again and again and again like that. Keep your energy high, right? You want to have good energy because that energy brings a life to your video. It makes your audience feel alive. And, and it's just a better state to be in. If you're, if you ever watched a video and the person's just like, Hey guys, how Welcome to today's video. You're instantly like turned off from me. You're like, oh, I don't want to watch this. This is going to be boring as hell, right? So keep the energy up. You might, it might feel weird at first when you're like making a video. You don't want to be like so extra that you're kind of going, up, you know, above, right? But at the same time, you don't want to just be like drab without energy. Like when I watch a video, I want someone to have energy, okay? And you might feel weird doing it. You're like, this isn't me. It's okay. It's, it, it, it doesn't have to be you. But when you show up and you step onto the court, right? Like LeBron James on the, on the basketball court is different than LeBron James off the basketball court, okay? Like that's just how it is. So when you step up and you put, turn that camera on, just keep that energy up, up because it's really going to help. It's going to bring everything to life and it's going to really captivate your audience on a whole new level, okay? And body language is another thing. Remember, stay grounded at state, okay? be calm, be controlled, be collective. Okay. It's going to be hard at first. It still is for me. Right. Sometimes I'm all over the place. Sometimes I catch myself like swaying and I'm like, what am I doing? Right. So don't move for the sake of movement, move when it makes sense. Right. So watch your body language because that expresses a lot. Make sure you're open. Okay. You don't want to be like closed off with your, you know, hands crossed. It, it puts up a barriers between you and your audience. You want to be open in state. Um, and just, just watch your movements. Right. Cause I know a lot of people, if you watch people that most people that speak on stage, you'll notice they do this weird, like back and forth, like pace. That's not because it's part of the presentation. That's because they're nervous. Okay. I've done it. I, I've watched presentations of myself where I'm literally just going left and right the entire hour. And I'm like, what am I doing? Right. It's more of a nervous thing. And you have to just remember, like move, don't move for the sake of movement move just because you're like, you know, you're like, this makes sense to say something now. 
Okay. So those are kind of the four things right there. And that is will, will help with delivery. All right. So that was shooting tips, starter equipment, delivery. Last thing guys is post-production. This is where the magic happened. This is how your videos really come to life. All right. There's an amazing resource. Write this down. It's also found in done for you plus um, inside of done for you plus video hive. This is like the internet's best kept secret. Barely anyone knows about video hive. Video hive is an amazing resource to use. Um, it will create lower thirds. Okay. If you don't know what a lower third is, don't worry. I barely still know what one is, but a lower third is basically, if you ever see, like, watch like a news, um, again, the news comes on at night and you turn it on and you see like a guy on camera. Hi, I'm John here with, you know, whatever it might be. And then below it, it will, it will have like an animated thing that comes in. It would say like, you know, John Smith, um, local news analyst, right? And then it like disappears. That's called a lower third. It's it's this really cool animation that can come on and then it can go off, right? So Video Hive is this amazing resource. Like I said, barely anyone knows about this where you can get like all these cool things that you can just slam onto your video, okay? If you don't know how to use it because some of these things require like uh, different types of software, you can hire someone on Fiverr, do the stuff for like five bucks, all right? It's really cool though, but it adds good production value to your video. Um, excuse me. And then you can do what's called a logo sting. Um, a logo sting is, if you ever watch any of my videos, you'll see at the end, it's got the Blake Newbar like logo, and then it does like an animation and then it ends the video. Okay. Logo stings really add good production value to your video because it's, it just, it, it gives the value that a video really deserves. So if you shoot a nice video, right, put a, put, you can put your logo, whether it's the logo you're creating for your brand or your company logo, whichever one you want to use, put a logo sting there. It's you can go to video hive and type in a logo sting exactly that. And you can put it uh, at the end of your video. Okay. Don't put them at the beginning. A lot of people make the mistake and they put it at the beginning of the video. It will kill your view times. Okay. No one wants to watch a logo sting at the beginning of a video. People want to get directly to the content that's being taught. So only use them at the end of your video, but video hive is a great spot to really add post-production to it. Audio jungles, another internet best kept secret. Um, it's called Envato market Envato market marketplace. That's the big house, the big company that has the video hive and audio jungle and audio jungle is another one because what audio ju jungle does is, is it gives background music. Okay. So, um, the background music you'll notice if you go to any one of my trainings or a lot of them, at least not all of them, but most of my trainings, right. I'll have subtle background music. It's cause it brings it to life. Right. Um, the same reason why, if you watch movies or television shows, pay attention, like we're not really aware of it, but pay attention next time you're watching TV and listen to the background sound effects and the music it's there for a reason. It, it, it elicits emotion. It elicits, um, um, action and, and anxiety and, and just specific emotions. We're trying to elicit from the viewer. Background music can do that. You'll notice in a lot of the videos that we have in the program, the background music is calm and collective. That's on purpose because I want you guys to have fun building this out. So background music just adds more of that production value to it. And it really can bring your video to life as well. I We use Camtasia and iMovie. That's how we edit our stuff. It's super easy if you guys are working on an iMac. Um, iMovie comes for free literally free. You can start editing with iMovie. It is the easiest software to use. You could go to YouTube and watch like one tutorial video on how to add audio to iMovie. Camtasia is a little more complex. It's basically, we use this too, because you can do some more advanced things with it, but Camtasia can be used on any device. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of the same thing. It's really cool editing software where you can edit, um, you can add audio clips and you just drag and drop this stuff inside of it. Okay. Audio clips, uh, video clips, all this stuff. And you can really create your own video. It's really fun. Like you guys are going to get, I'm telling you, you're going to get addicted to this. If once you start getting the hang of it and using it, it's going to be really fun. Okay. The secret sauce though, to the editing style, if you go watch my videos, it's cut zooms plus background music. That's the magic. All right. We don't do anything too crazy. We do, it's called a cut zoom. And we add background music. Okay. A cut zoom is really simple. Um, what a cut zoom is, if you're ever watching one of my videos, right. And I'm talking to you and then in instantly, like it cuts to me, like zoomed up. That's a cut zoom. Okay. And then cut zoom out and then zoom in and then zoom out. Right. It just cuts to these zooms. It's called a cut zoom. It's really cool. You can do it in any of the softwares. Um, but it, it just, it adds a dynamic to your video that really keeps you, it emphasizes key points when I'm speaking. So if I, if, if I'm saying something that we want to emphasize, we'll typically cut zoom to it right? So at specific moments, it's all also adds a, a, a cool dynamic layer to your video that keeps you interested because there's all these different things happening where you, you won't get so bored. You'll, you'll stay pretty interested in it. Um, and then background music, that's it. Those are really the two things we do. If you watch any of our videos, I'm doing cut zooms in and out like, oh, 
breaks breaks here and then I'm, I'm zoomed out and then background music added to those videos and it just it creates a whole new experience right i have videos where i have none of this and i have videos where i have it and it's a night and day difference it's that simple okay um video links they will be they're not like below below but inside of done for you plus go check out some of the videos if you guys want to watch the videos you can see all of them located in done for you plus um you guys have access to that absolutely free uh and uh and uh you can uh you can check it out. You can check out the actual videos uh, in their actual form. Okay. So that I want to share that. I think, I think it's important. I don't think enough people really talk about shooting video, even though it's like when it comes to an online business, it's, it's, it's something that I want everyone to start experimenting with. Um, I don't want you to think that, Oh, do I have to do video for this to work? No, you don't have to do video for this to work, but um, it's really important to, to, uh, to build, to build a relationship with your audience um, through video. So that was today's presentation, guys. I want to run through that. If you have any questions on that, let me know. If you have questions, I guess we'll start with questions on that first, and then we can move more towards any other questions you may have. If you guys have questions on that, please raise your hand, um, and we'll go ahead and call on anyone that may have a question. Let me make sure I'm doing this correctly. Um, the raise your hand is at the bottom somewhere. Some, oh, no, we don't want to go live on Facebook. It's under the section that says reactions. Reactions. Yeah. Yes, perfect. Under reactions, guys, if you have any questions about video, um, feel free to raise your hand and we will, I will be more than happy to call on anyone. All right, Scott. Hey, hey Scott. So, How you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. This is so good. Um, uh, so when you're looking at doing it yourself versus someone else doing it what's your mindset around that for like so for me if I do it myself I have everything into it and it means a lot more than if I have somebody else do it for me but then then I'm like my business mind kicks in and says well that having somebody else that knows a lot more doing it uh saves me time so are you referring to actually being on camera or the post-production? The, the post-production, um, that, that kind of stuff, yeah. So here's how we do it. Um, here's funny enough, we still do a lot of it ourselves. When we, we, we could be hiring out. The reason we do is because sometimes when you're shooting a video, um, it's hard to explain to someone else what you're looking for because how we really do it, Ace, Ace does a lot of the editing. And the reason we have a hard time outsourcing that it's not impossible. We could find someone, but the reason we like to do it is because we're pretty maniacal when it comes to, Oh, you know, you'll go through the video and you'll be like, Ooh, this would be cool to experiment here. And to like try and go back and forth with someone on that is just, it's exhausting. So you may look at it like, yeah, will you save time outsourcing it? It depends. How creative do you want to get with it? So my piece of advice is I would do the first few yourself. Um, even if it takes a little extra time, I'm a firm believer in, doing something first before hiring someone else to do it. Everything that, you know, we do in our business, we do it first. I don't want someone doing something that I have no experience in yet. So I'm always a fan of, let me do a little bit of it myself. And then if I can, and then hopefully the goal is to be able to communicate that to someone else. It doesn't mean you have to, it just means if you eventually want to get it off your plate, you at least now know kind of what you're looking for and you're, you're better able to articulate it now to, to a professional that can come in and do it for you. So I would do it yourself at first. And then if you want, outsource it out. We still do it in-house, crazy enough. Um, we're probably going to start outsourcing it soon, but we just, we love doing some of this stuff. So we keep it in-house. Thank you. That, that it. answers it. <laughs> Wait, awesome. I'm on the right path. Perfect. Awesome, Scott. Um, what's up, Quentin? How's it going, Blake? How you doing, man? I'm doing just fine. A uh, quick question for you. Uh, how important do you think it is to have a, a script or, or do you recommend just kind of kind of freestyling or maybe it depends? I just wanted your, your, your thoughts on that. Here's how I do it. And that's a great question because it, oh man. So when I started, I used, we used to do script. Well, here, let me take that back. I would always have some type of script, right? Whether it's bullet points, you want to know what you're talking about or a full blown out script. I would always I would always have a structure to what you're going to say because you'll be more grounded and you'll be more composed when you know where you're flowing to next. I would always have that, whether it's bullet points or a script. 
if it's something that's short, if you're shooting maybe a 30 second, 15 second video, 30 second video, you can kind of freestyle a little more, have some bullet points built out, be like, Hey, I want to talk about this, this, and this, and kind of do your thing with it. If it's something that you're trying to have like more of a sales thing, like you'll notice like in the advanced training, if, if you shoot the masterclass video, it's a script. The reason for that is because there's very specific things you want to say and not forget those parts out. Now, if you're doing something that's longer, look, I get it. It's tough to memorize, right? It's like, it takes time. It's, you're like, oh, what do I say next? It, it, it can become exhausting. I would put it on a teleprompter. Um, I'm, I used to not be fans of teleprompters, but as you start realizing you're shooting five, six minute videos, sometimes, sometimes it's good to have one. So I would always have some type of script, whether it's bullet points or a full blown script, the shorter videos, you can do more of a freestyle approach, but make sure you touch on your bullet points. The longer videos have, I would write out a script and then get like an app, like big view, V I G V U. I think it is. I could be wrong. Um, there's a ton of them. Go to the app store, the Google play store and type in like teleprompter. And what you can do is you can upload your script to your phone and you can hold the phone and just, and read it. And, it, and your eyes are looking at the camera. So it comes off naturally. Nice. Nice. Thanks for that insight. You got it, man. Cool. Um, what's up, Brian? Hey, we are good. We are good. Um, interesting stuff already. Thank you. Um, question I have is, uh, background noise, like uh, hums from the fans of computers or the AC, heat and air, and so forth. Um, is it, it? How do you how do you deal with that? So I try and get to a place where it doesn't have that. <clears throat> um, sometimes that can come off annoying to a viewer, and and once they pick up on it, it's they can't stop hearing yeah, you it. Can't not hear it. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> I would focus on trying to find a setting that just doesn't have any of those noises involved. Okay. Um, so have you come across any software, maybe in post-production sometimes, I guess they, they sample a, a quiet uh, portion of your video and then they extract that from your final take. Yeah. There, you're, if you can get a software engineer, you can find some good ones that can tone it down. Um, the background music will also help cover it up as well. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. so just experiment. I, if you're in a place right now where you're like, Blake, I have no, I, everywhere I am, it's, it's loud. What I would do is shoot a clip and then put some background music over it and, and very low, like the background music, you want to make sure it's low enough so I can hear you obviously. And then see if it kind of, a lot of times it will, it will go over that sound completely and you won't even hear it at all. Okay. Very good. Thank you. You got it. Um, any other questions on? Yes. Hey, Forrest. Hey, sir. So one question I actually did have here, because I because I DJ for a living and certain things you have to watch, especially FCC. Are we copyrighted on saying any big names when we're using things in video? Like if I say Coca-Cola or I say Pepsi, do we have to be worried about patent or copyright? I wish I could give advice on that. I can't. Um, we have attorneys that we, it's very good to stay compliant. If you're ever if, you're, if it's ever a thought, I would stay away from it. Again, okay. I don't want to, I'm not an attorney. I can't give any legal advice. Um, we remain as compliant as humanly possible in our business. Um, a lot of people don't, unfortunately, that's how it is. Um, but always, my non-attorney advice is always err on the side of caution, right? It's just, it's the right thing to do. I'm not saying that doing that is wrong. I don't know. I don't have the, the credibility to give any advice on it. Um, but anytime, if you're wondering either, either a, I would seek out legal advice on that or B just leave it out. Okay. It, it shouldn't affect anything really. Um, a lot of people, you know, are under the impression that like, you know, I used to be like this. I used to be like, Oh, I wish I could say, say this and I'll say, and I'll do all this stuff and say this. And it, you know, it really, to my, to what we've seen, it doesn't really affect much. If, if the message is there and the values presented and it really hits the cord with someone that's looking for that solution to the pain they're having, they're going to raise their hand and they're going to say, I want what it is that you have, regardless of, of, you know, the credibility that you aid to the video. So I always err on the side of caution. Again, um, I would consult legal counsel or just leave it out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Okay. Any other questions before we open the floor on anything that's on anyone's mind with their business, with their funnel, with anything? Okay. Um, all right, cool. Uh, guys, if you have any questions you want to ask aside from rockstar video hacks, um, this is kind of the time to do it again. These are AMA masterminds. Ask me anything. 
Um, the stage is to anyone that raises their hand. If you have a question about anything and you want my advice on it, my strategic direction, I am here to help on that. Very simple, bottom of the screen. Awesome, I see him coming in. Bottom of the screen where it says reactions, go ahead and just raise your hand and I will go in order of that. So first we have Chala. If I'm not saying that correctly, please correct me now. If it's Shala or Chala, um, the floor is yours. You'll have to um, unmute your mic. Hey, Blake, I'm sorry, I'm driving. It's okay. <laughs> so, um, um, so my question was, um, I did the, the email uh, configure integration. And so after purchase, the email is delayed. I want to say about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. But it comes. And that's straight from order confirmation, membership. Membership, they have the login. After the login, the email is sent straight to them and is delayed about 15 to 20 minutes. And that's the email going from your ClickFunnels account? Yes. And you don't want it to be delayed 20 minutes? No. Yeah. So it happens. I have no control over that. It, it's weird. Sometimes it will send right away. Sometimes it takes like 15 minutes. That's just a send grade. That's a send grade click funnels, love, hate, uh, dynamic relationship. It, ju it just really depends. Um, our emails take some time. I mean, we have emails go out that are supposed to be instant that take 20 minutes. It really depends on how backed up the server is on send grid. Um, if you're not on a dedicated IP, um, it could take a little longer. I don't expect anyone to be on a dedicated IP. Um, it's one of those things I would just, on your order confirmation page, I would just address it on the top. I would just say, if this is happening to anyone as well, um, I would just say, Hey, expect an email from us in the next 10 to 15 minutes. If you don't receive one, reach out to me here, but if not, you can log in below and it should, excuse me, it should address the issue. At least as long as your customer's aware, that's the key. Um, it's when people aren't aware or they're, they're, they don't understand what's going on. That's when kind of like hell breaks loose where they're like, Hey, I didn't get this or whatever it might be. So as long as you just, you know, you mentioned that it could be a delay, it should solve any issue that customers could be having. Yeah. That's thank you so much. That's exactly what I did uh, okay. initially when an email was delayed. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the question. Thank you so much. I appreciate Got it. it. No problem. Um, hey, Robin. You have to unmute. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I just have a quick question. Sure. Um, I already had ClickFunnels before I joined your program. Okay. In fact, I'd actually signed up for a year because I hate monthly payments. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. My question is, a part of this package, you know, you, you promote or want us to use ClickFunnels. Um, I don't know. You know, you have to have the 14 days. You can use, have somebody sign up for the 14 days. Yes. I, but I've already have click funnels. So I didn't want to re-register for something that I already have. How do yeah, I get around that? Don't do it. Just use your click funnels. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If anyone has click funnels already, don't, don't sign up again. Use, use it already. Um, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Just skip that step. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. Thank yep, you. You can, you can skip it and, and just fall, fall, pretend you, you already have it obviously. So just pretend you did it and then just keep going through the training. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Quinn. All right, Blake, I'm back, man. What's up, man? <laughs> um, all right, so I'm, I'm going to take you back to, to video, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. How do you pair, I guess, what I would call tone with, I guess, your delivery intent? So by that, I mean, uh, whether you go with something like dramatic or, or, or funny or, 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 or exciting, like, I guess, is there a, a, a strategy to, to how you pair that with the, the type of message that you're trying to deliver? Absolutely. Great question. Um, so when it comes to the messaging, the messaging can kind of guide the tone, right? So let me give you an example. We just launched, a, uh, we're working on a new promo thing and it's promo. It's a really cool experience that we're, we're working on. So we want it to be more of like an uplifting, like not hardcore, but like we want it to match the idea that we want to present. So if you're presenting a brand new idea or if you're launching something for the first time, I like to go with more of like kind of like a rock tone, like build excitement, like, you know, high energy, right? And then there's some times where 
the tone comes down. Like if I'm telling my backstory, right? Cause we all have a backstory. Everyone right now knows exactly where you were at the moment, you know, for whatever reason, when, you know, things hit the fan, you might've hit rock bottom. And every time I tell my backstory, the music changes, the, the delivery changes. And it's always based on what is it that I'm trying to articulate and what's the emotion I want to elicit from, from the audience or the viewer. Right. So if I'm telling my, 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 let's call it my, my violin story, right. Of, of when shit was hard for me. And, and, you know, I went through my moment, my struggle, I'm not going to be like in your face, like rock and roll, let's do this. It's more of like me standing there, like really expressing what, what life was like, you know, before a specific thing. And the tone will always match kind of that message. So step one, decide whatever the message you have, kind of look at that message. And, and when you, you're able to see that message, you're, you're going to be able to see the kind of tone you want to, uh, to, to match to it. If it's something that you're promoting, I like to be high energy. I like to show people I'm excited about it because I, I am. If it's something where I want to elicit more of an emotional connection with my audience, I'm going to be more calm, collective, more more Casanova style with how I'm able to articulate information. So it just, it really kind of depends on, on what that, the content of that message is and the idea you're trying to communicate. That's how I kind of met, uh, match how I want to present myself to the viewer at that moment. Okay. So, so would you agree with this flow? I'm just trying to kind of put it all together in my head. Sure. Uh, maybe you start with, with the script or, or the bullet points. This is typically how I formulate for my presentations. Yep. Um, and then upon reading the script, you say, OK, it's probably best that we do it here. So we maybe pick a location and then based on that location, pair it with the, the I guess, the tone or the energy level. Yes, exactly right. So if you get a chance, go into done for you. You don't have to do the program right now. Go into done for you plus and go to Rockstar Video Hacks. It's the first lesson, I believe, on section two. I could be mistaken, um, but it's the first lesson of one of them. Skip the video scroll down to the video examples and watch each one of them. And you'll see exactly how we tone the message with the, the level I, I want to portray. And you'll see the different vibes. And instantly when you watch the videos, you'll get different vibes from each one. So we create the message. After we create the message, we come up with the setting, the message and the tone kind of go hand in hand. And then we kind of pick the setting that we want for it. Got it. Got it. Thanks, man. You got it, man. Hey, Scott. Hello. Thank you. Um, I got a couple questions. So I'll start with this one is, uh, what, what, what's your thought process? What are you thinking when you get these amazing ideas, but then you know that you're, you're not necessarily taking action on every single one of them, yeah. you know, like, especially when you were starting, because yeah. starting out in entrepreneurship, especially online, the, like, you, you know, you, you get what I'm trying to ask her, what I mean? There's a million things, a million okay. bazillion things that goes through every one of our brains every single day. And there's always this moment of like, what's the right thing to pursue? What's the thing I should work on? Right. And the, we, I had the hardest time with this for the longest time. I, everything sounds good. Right. And you're like, which one do I do? What thing do I work on? And you always have to remember stay very focused. All right. It's the hardest thing to do. Like there's days even right now where like we're working on 10, let's say we're working on like four different things. I already know that's a mistake. Work on one thing at a time and work on it until it's done and then move to the next. Anytime you want to divide time amongst different activities, it's just hard and nothing's ever going to turn out how you want it. So what I would do is list all the things that you have, and this goes for anyone, right? Whether you're working on video content or changing some of the sales copy or, or doing the products, like list all the things that you have that you could be doing and just pick the one thing that you want to focus on and do that until it's done. And everything about it in your body might say, no, I want to work on four or five different things or because what we typically do as humans and as entrepreneurs, we work on the things that we that, that have the, the, the fastest result, the quick, the quickest momentum, right? We kind of avoid all the stuff that's hard because- there's no momentum at first. It's, it's, it's hard. It's something our brains are like, we don't want to tackle that. I don't want to work on it, but that usually means that those are the things you should work on. So I, we, I always pick the hardest things. That's what we do here at the office is Ace and I, we, we pick the hardest things to work on because we know that's, that's what's right. And then we tackle those in the beginning of the day. And then when we're done, we go to some more of the easy stuff. So 
I would, I would make a list of all the things. Cause the best thing anyone can do is get all of the ideas out on your head. I have a notes app. If you guys saw this thing, it's absolutely insane. So I use my iPhone notes. Literally. I have like, it's just all notes, right? Just, I get everything out of my head and I put it down on paper and then I just go one by one. And I'm like this first, then this, then this. And the list is a revolving list. And as things come on, things go off, things come on, things go off. And that's kind of how I not only structure my day, but how we advance in business is by doing that. So just stay focused, work on one thing at a time. And then like, just own that thing. Just be like, I'm not leaving until that one thing's done. And then when it's done, move on to the next thing. For the longest time, we'd work on five different things and we'd all try and move them in parallel. And next thing you know, you're three weeks in and like nothing's finished yet. And, and although it, feel, it might feel good working on them, it, it becomes demotivating when you don't get to see a result from any of them. So I like to tackle one thing at a time. Awesome. Darren answered that me before too. I just wanted to know your thought process. And okay, that that makes total sense. Thank yeah. you for that. And the the second one is uh, so so. Um, you know, it seems like you have this one business, but I have a coaching business. So you're doing training and coaching, and I have a high end coaching business as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, and this yeah now this works so awesome. That's why I'm doing it because it combines both. How would you go about doing them in parallel? Cause, and, and it's not necessarily the same time, but it's in parallel. And, um, like, like my, my plan is to offer my high end coaching at the end of this funnel. Yep. So what I would do is I would drive all your traffic to the front end funnel. Right. Okay. So, you, you can mix it up. You can split traffic. If you have like, let's say you have people that are ready to just jump in your coaching, bring them to the coaching. But what this funnel can do for you is you can, you can now bring in, bring in prospects at the time. Cause let's say they're not customers yet present the value of this because every business on this planet needs this, right? Just no one's very few are aware of it yet. That's why it's such a golden opportunity. Um, and I would drive when you're starting to expand your business, maybe you're at that stage now, Uh, Maybe you're not, maybe you're like, nope, I'm I'm still like working the kinks out on my coaching. I don't know how far along you are, but use, use your digital product business, which is the one you're working on here as a way to generate new leads and sales to ascend to your coaching business. And you'll have a whole new stream of customers coming in where you're not asking them, let's say for, I don't know how expensive your coaching is, but I assume it's in the upwards of, you know, around the thousands mark up, um, this is a lower barrier to entry. It's $7. Everyone has seven bucks, right? And if someone's not going to buy the $7, it's not a price thing. It's more of a value thing. So you can really lower any friction points people may have with your coaching with this. You can also utilize this in terms of your coaching business for the people that say no. They're like, Scott, I don't know, man, this seems good and all. I just, I don't know about it for whatever reason, right? You could downsell this idea and say, you know, hey, listen, I totally understand. Like, let me show you something that can help you out in the meantime. And when the time is right, come back and see me. And you can still provide them value by sending them through this online business. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Got it. That, 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 uh, I took notes on that. And, uh, and the other one is, I don't know, if, well, maybe somebody else will ask this. What are you working on now? We're like, uh, like projects wise. Yeah. What are you working on? I, like, I love your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Um, so we're working a lot right now is what we're working on is shooting a lot of ad content and publishing. Um, we're also doing things. The accelerators are main thing. This, the, the program here to always refine it, make it better, add more things to it. You'll notice, um, as being a member, we're always like, there's always surprises and tidbits along the way that we throw in, um, that were never planned originally because we always want to improve things as a business. You ask Darren, I mean, every time we, we talk, there's something new going on. Um, so it's really focusing on catering to our customers. At the same time, um, we're going to start publishing a lot more. So you'll start seeing my face a lot more on YouTube. And, and we got some cool like show ideas we want to launch and things like that, just to start really building the business up on a whole new level. But first and foremost, it's our customers. We started this business um, based on one core philosophy, and that's caring. Everyone on my team, Darren, you'll notice there's something unique we do that we, after evaluating the marketplace is we like, we just, we give a shit and and that's kind of how we roll. And, and we always want to make sure we cater to customers first and foremost and our clients and our members. And then at the same time, we're working on really uh, uh, publishing, you know, doing the stuff I was telling you guys, which is the video hacks. I, it applies to me just as well, getting in front of the camera and, and, and showing the world, Hey, 
this is what we're doing. This is what we're working on right now. And, and, and really, you know, getting, you know, the face out there a little more than, than ever. So those are kind of the things we're working on at the time. Awesome. Thank you. You got it. I, I'm good now. Okay. <laughs> Just, yeah, no problem. Those answers are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, hey, Cheryl Lynn. Hey, Blake. How you doing? Good, good. Um, you know, everyone talks about uh, being overwhelmed with life and with the program and, and doing our regular job and doing the side hustle. Um, my question to you is, um, where do you find good virtual assistants? <laughs> yeah. And how do we let go of some of those controls? Let's say I want to have my kids, you know, I'll have my VA say, you know, I want you to book a dentist appointment. I want you to book a doctor's appointment so I can focus on the business and I don't have to go digging for doctors or digging for, you know, school supplies or stuff like that. So any advice you can give me that would be awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a relinquished control thing on top of where to source talent. Yeah. No, welcome. You're, you're an entrepreneur, 100%. Um, as entrepreneurs, we're control freaks, right? If you guys feel like you're, you want control over every aspect of your business and your life, welcome to the club. You have just stepped into a, the vast world of the few and many of entrepreneurs. That's a normal thing. I, we, oh man, if I could tell you how many experiences we've been back and forth with relinquishing control, it would be sickening, right? Um, so first off, the fact that <clears throat> you're aware of it is key. Um, in order to grow a business, you have to give up control, right? Which is, it's the opposite of what we want to do, right? Because as entrepreneurs, we're thinking, no one's going to do the job as well as me. So I want to do it. And you have to remember that the key to scaling and growing is to give up that control. There's a, a good uh, good marketer, his name's Todd Brown. I, I, I saw a video from him one time. This was like maybe a year ago. And he's like, hey, listen, like I hate giving up control, but here's the thing. In order to grow, you'd rather someone do the job as 70% as well as you could do it 100% because at least you can grow it then. So the key is to giving up control is to just give up control. Test someone with the ability to do a task. Is it going to come out the way that you want it, Cheryl? No, it will probably not come out the way exact way you want it. But the key is, is it frees up your time and your brain power to focus on what's important in the business, which is growing it and giving the strategic direction and the vision that the business needs to prosper on. Right. So what I would do first is a, we source a lot of our talent from Upwork. <clears throat> Upwork is you can get amazing VAs. There's also another uh, site called um, it's called free up F R E E E U P. So one extra E called free up good buddy of mine, Nathan owns it, or I think he, he sold it, but it's all VAs. Right. So I would look at, we look at Upwork first. That's just kind of our go-to Upwork. Um, even Fiverr has VAs, but Fiverr, in my opinion, is more of like the design, you know, stuff like that. So Upwork to find a VA, I would interview a few VAs. Um, you can get them. They're super affordable. And what I would do is become very clear on, on the task, right? Like give them a role. Like you're going to be doing this, 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 and this, right. And, and test out a VA, right? Hire, what's the saying? Hire slow, fire fast. So look for someone that can tackle kind of that list you're looking to off put and go from there. What, what I did specifically is I wrote down every single thing that I'm doing on a daily basis. And I circled all the things um, that I knew I could delegate, right? It, which is like, you'll, you'll be in shock. It's going to be like 99% of the things, right? And the one thing you're going to want to focus on is like, what can grow the business? So circle everything that you can uh, outsource and then you can either find one person to start, which I would recommend. I'm, I'm more of the economical guy, like what can be cost effective and then create a job brief based on all of those things that you want to outsource, right? You can even group them if you want. If you want to like group them, like, okay, these are admin tasks. These are design tasks, for example. These are whatever types of tasks and then find different people. But I think in the beginning, it's you could just probably find one person. And what it's going to do is you're going to have this moment of like, oh, is it, is it getting done? But you're also going to have this moment where you're going to be more clear and, and, and this weight is going to lift off your shoulder instantly where you can now focus on other things. So 
I would use Upwork, find a VA, make sure you have a clear and concise job description based on the things you want them to do. And a lot, they're going to nail it, right? They're, they, they're usually really good. Look at their success rate. Look at how much money they've generated on the website too, because those are clear indications of, of if they're going to be able to perform the task. Sounds good. Thank you. You got it. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, I, don't, I might not be going in order. And I think, hang on, there was one person, Renee, was it you that had your hand up? And I think I accidentally lowered your hand because. Yeah, uh, I did, but it looks like Ernie needs to go next because it's his daughter's eighth birthday. Oh, Ernie, so. all right, you're, you're up. <laughs> I'll go after Ernie. <laughs> okay, Ernie. Thank you so much. Happy That's birthday to your daughter. Uh, thanks, she's upstairs with the <laughs> Yeah, we'll let you go, man. I know you're busy, do your thing. Appreciate it, help? thanks, Mike. Um, I had a couple questions. Um, on the click funnels, I was, uh, going through the banking part and I came to uh, a couple of questions there about like tax stuff and whatnot. I'm, I'm okay. in Canada okay. they're trying to give me like a tax uh, form or whatever. Like, okay. um, do I need this or. Yeah, I think they're going to want the, it's the W8. Is that it for you? I think, I think so. I have to go back and do it. I got logged out and I, cause I didn't know what I was doing. So. Yeah. I, I think they just want you to submit the W8 in your case. I'm not exactly sure the, the independent con contractor tax form for Canada. Um, but the reason is, is because if you generate over when you generate over $600 with them, oh um, they have to report it. I believe, I don't know how international works exactly, but I believe they're still going to want it on file. Okay. Ernie, I'm in Canada as well, and I just use my business number. Yeah, wing for prime, yeah, like the tax, the tax business number that we get. I, I was looking for that number actually, and Prime they didn't uh, give it to me, so I'm kind of waiting for Kyle to kind of get back to me. Well, I'm going to give him a call Monday for that the number. But yeah, it's, it's with the CRA. Um, at least that's in, in our business account. It's with that, which is like the IRS in, in the States. But that number is, is, I think, what they want. That's what I used. Okay. Yeah, that may, I, I wish I could be more helpful, but I don't want to give you inaccurate advice because tax accounting and, and international law versus with ClickFunnels being in the United States is not my forte. But yeah, based on what Scott said, if, if you can get that number or the tax form, I'm not exact, exactly sure what they're going to ask for the international domestic because they're here in the U.S. Um, I just know like once you get to them, they're, they're going to be pretty quick on getting you set up with Topalti to issue payments. Okay. Um, and uh, on the, the custom graphics, it was asking me what the name of the product is. Is that the brand name? Name, yeah, whatever you want to name your actual, like I'm social media lead machine, for okay. example, whatever your, the name of your product's going to be, because that will go front facing on the custom graphics. Okay. And uh, sorry, my last question here is, uh, is that $7? Is it all in US money or? You can, you can change it. So it's up to you. $7 is just what I have. I, there's people charging $14. I mean, if you want to change your currency, I believe you can. I'm not sure. Darren might know more than me. Darren, do you keep it USD or do you change it? Keep it USD, but we do have uh, people inside of the Black Spider program that are doing it in the local currency, maybe in euros and so on. I guess. But make sure, ma but make yeah. sure it's uh, above four four dollars US. So, whatever pricing you want, really, you can charge your own as long as it's above four four dollars US. Okay. And uh, Kartra and Tipley, uh, I need both of those. No, you don't need Kartra. Kartra is just what I use for the membership area. Um, well, for social, for, for the digital product business, no, we use all quick funnels. You don't, you don't need Kartra for anything. Topalti is what you're going to be using. It's the click funnels kind of like gateway to pay you out. So, um, I uploaded some new trainings. I don't know if anyone saw them. Um, but basically to register for click funnels, if you want to become an elite affiliate, um, I show you now how to go sign up. You need to Palti because that's basically click funnels way of, this is how they orchestrate payments out to your account. You, you do need to sign up it's free there's no hidden cost there's no no cost or anything like that um, but they will want you to sign up for that and that is going to be a result of you submitting the tax information once you do that um it's you should be free and clear okay awesome thank you so much you got Have it a great weekend guys you thank you so much for letting me sneak in there of course see you ernie cheers
All right, we'll go Renee, then uh, Sam, then Esperanza. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so I'm officially launched all the way through my master class now. Congratulations. Um, that's, that's, it's done, done. What I call done, done, finally. Um, and I'm <laughs> starting, I just started yesterday with the ad part. Okay. And I was wondering, so when you first start out with your ads, so I'm trying to build up, I created a Facebook page okay. that goes to my funnel. So it's like a business page. Okay. Um, and so I started some, uh, I guess, boosting your posts okay. to my niche market. I okay. did my first one yesterday. And I was just wondering if you had some foundational tips for helping me get um, get that off the ground. So far I've got, I've reached 31, all, all of 31 people and only two of those people have actually interacted with the question. I didn't post it as an ad per se for, um, you know, sending them directly to my funnel yet yeah. because there's really nothing on the page yet. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start building some conversation. Sure. So no, I, I mean, basically that's... posted a question and, and promoted it. Okay. No, that's great. I mean, you're going to get a lot of your reach from your business page from doing that. If you had 31 and two engaged, that's, that's, that's great. Um, what I would do is, so what I would personally do is use my, pro, are, are you using your personal profile at all to like stir conversation? Um, only to say, you know, Hey, go check out my page kind of thing okay. to, I have some people on my, my page that are actually, um, they are friends at my work. So I have okay. to kind of be careful because I it. still have to keep my day job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally understand. Um, so what I would do is, uh, so what, what I do on my page is I just post content and then we'll boost specific things. We just pick our niche and to, it's more of an awareness thing is how we're doing it is more of brand awareness um, to stir conversations. Generally business pages, the reach is just low anyway. It's just how it is. Facebook is kind of a okay. pay to play. So boosting, at least you're paying them on that sense. Um, I would just give it some time. I would, um, I'm more of a fan of jumping in the groups and engaging organically that way. Um, mm -hmm. and then running, you can run some like nurture style, like boosted posts. You're going to have a mixed review. You're going to have a lot of people be like boosted posts is a waste of time, run ads. Right. I still, we still boost stuff just for brand, just to get some reach to the page. Um, mm -hmm. more of a brand stuff, but it's a pay to play thing. It's like, if you, if, if from your business page, if, if you boost or if you run ads, that's how, that's what Facebook wants. Like, that's why they, they cut the reach pretty hardcore because they don't want, they want you to pay to be on their platform to generate traffic. That, mm -hmm. That's why I focus a lot on, I either go hardcore organic, which is like jumping in the groups, right. And engaging that right. way. And then kind of building relationships or I run, I go straight to Facebook ads and, 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 and rely on the ad, the, the, the paid media to actually drive sales and traffic boosted post to me. We utilize it more as a, um, as a branding play, just to get our content out in the, in the, in the marketplace a little better. Okay. Okay. Um, and then my second question was, um, uh, have, has there been any replacement to the, you know, how you get your landing page and you have those two videos on the landing page of all of yes. the people are, yes. is there a plan to redo those anytime soon? Um, no, I'm going to keep them cause they work well. Um, okay. they, they still work well, but feel free. If you, I, I give you the ability to download the video. Um, what a lot of people do is they will. So, uh, we had a lot of, of members reach out and they're like, Blake, can we just get the video? So I give everyone the ability to download the video. If you want to put your own kind of like sales message on front, you can okay. edit it. You can edit that how you want. There's only so much we can do. I can't, um, it's hard to change it because if I, if I shoot in, if I shoot one for myself, it's not going to make any sense for anyone else. So it's more of a testimonial driven, um, video. It works funny enough. That video has been the video from day one. I can't even beat it in terms of conversion. It it's, it still wins by far over. I've had videos where I just did all sales message. It does not work as well. That testimonial one where people are giving their experience has, has beaten every, every every control group I've ever done. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Sam. Sam, your mic is on mute. There you go. Can you hear me now? Okay. Can, yeah, we can hear you. 
Um, I just had a quick question going back to the video because I know that you were talking about like we should go out in nature or like near water or something like that. What do you feel about um, like virtual backgrounds? Um, is it too obvious that it's a virtual or does that kind of like work? No, no, no. Virtual. Vir I mean, I'm look. So I'm like impartial on it. Virtual backgrounds are great. If that's like if if. If you're in a setting where it's like, it's just not going to work to go out in nature, don't use a virtual background. I think as long as it's just your background looks good. Um, here's how we do it. So anytime I'm shooting um, educational material, if you guys, if you're going through the program and you notice I'm on set, right? Anytime I, I want, I want to teach something and I want to, I want, you know, the audience to learn something new, I'm going to be on set. It's very simple. Um, the back of a background, which is this background now, which was recently changed. And I'm, I have a desk in front of me, like just like all the videos in the program, it's cause I, I want to be in like a teachy setting, right? Anytime I shoot anything promotional, I'm out offset. So, excuse me, I would just consider that as you, even if you do a virtual background, make sure the background aligns to kind of what you're doing. If you want to teach something brand new and you're like instructing, I would have like an office setting. If you want it to be a promo style, like an ad or something, get creative, have different virtual backgrounds and, and kind of see what works best. But to answer your question, yes, you can do a virtual background. But, but the virtual background should be more indoors than outdoors. I'm getting, uh, um, I mean, you can do out an outdoor setting. I'm more of, I'm a fan of shooting, uh, anything ad related or promotional, right. Um, outdoors, like outdoor settings. I'm a fan of shooting anything where I'm teaching indoors, but that's just me. That's just, you know, the style that we have here. Um, I would experiment. I would just throw on some cool backgrounds that you think will grab attention and, uh, and just play with it from there. Okay. Cool. Um, hey, Esperanza. You're on. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, this is my first time here with you and um Welcome. i'm so excited <laughs> well we're excited to have you <laughs> and you know what is um i just received my graphics i'm the beginner everybody here is advanced and uh, um you know actually i have been back and forth and everything i think i i have to do what you're saying follow a sequence not go ahead and okay yeah. i'm i'm trying to control myself to do that <laughs> And, um, but I, I still have the beginner's questions. That's um, okay. I don't know how to name, uh, who is my target? I'm a realtor. And, but there are so many businesses that need the help now. Sure. So I don't know how to combine those things. Can I serve both realtors and small businesses or entrepreneur? I'm not sure how to handle this. Okay, so I would pick one. Um, that's a good problem to have, right? Cause you know, you have two ideas in mind. I would pick one to start with. And if it's not working out as you're anticipating, maybe move to the next. So if you're in real estate, maybe go after realtors first. And mm -hmm. I would guide everything in that direction because realtors need more leads. They would love, you know, I know it's a seller's market right now here in the States at least. Um, but I'm sure they would love more leads. So I would probably do with what you know best right? And then if you ever want to open up a second niche, feel free to open up a second niche and go after a specific, you go after small business owners. That's a little more broad, but you could still attempt it. Um, but I would pick one and then work on that laser focus on that and then move to the next if you want to, or if you feel like you're having good enough success with realtors that you want to open up a second niche. Okay. And what is the specific, what I'm going to be giving them? You're going to be giving, so <clears throat> you're now the owner of a digital product business and you're going to be selling to other realtors the ability to generate more leads and more sales by using the products you're selling. You're selling the three products. All that's explained inside of the membership area if you want to resort back to some of the videos, but I'll give you kind of a synopsis. You're basically, they can come through your funnel, right? So you're going to be out there and you're going to be like, hey, realtors, do you want to find a way to get more seller leads or more buyer leads? I have exactly what you need check it out here. They click on the link. They go to your sales page, which is that first page. They can buy the $7 product. They can then buy the $37 product. They can even buy the $197 product. And what all those products do is teach them 
what they need to do to their social media profiles to transform them so they can attract more of their customers that they're looking for. You're selling a lead and sales generation solution to your, to your target audience who can use it to get more of the customers they're looking for. Okay. And what is that I'm giving them? Like a landing page where they can come and build it? No, you're going to be giving them a blueprint, um, which is kind of a PDF, let's call it right? Where they can take that and they can follow the directions on setting up what they need to set up. Mm -hmm. You're going to give them a way to generate traffic. And you're also going to give them a video course if they want that video course. I I can't remember. I I know Darren might, he's better than me at this, but yeah. Um, Intro to funnels, get to know your funnel, check out some of those lessons. It will help if you go exactly in order, like what what usually happens, don't skip around. And this goes for everyone. Mm -hmm. If you skip around even like one video, like this program was meticulously designed so that every video goes in a specific order. So if you skip around, it might get confusing. Um, Go video by video and you'll get to a video eventually if you haven't yet, that will explain exactly what you're selling and exactly what they're getting. Okay, so now um, I'm not sure. I'm pricing it for $9.49 and uh, $4.95. Is it too much? I mean, I, I like the prices. The prices I have work really well. Um, I've seen people price the first product at $16. Um, the goal there is not to so much, but it's to get that. It's to get your customers to show them some value for a very cost effective way. And then when you show someone value, naturally they want more value. Right. So my mm-hmm. pricing is seven thirty seven and one ninety seven, And then I have, the done for you, which you're brand new. So this won't make sense yet, but as you go through the program, it will make sense. The last product I have, I charge 1497 and I have people, we have people in the program charging 2000 and they're selling them like hotcakes. So it really just depends. So I like to stick around the 737, 197. There's people doing 747, 147. Again, this will all be explained in the program. You'll see the different pricing, but I would, I would stick around kind of those marks as much as possible. Okay, so when I got the 497 is more when they for the master class, right? Yeah, so 497, if you can sell it for 497, feel free. Like don't let me stop you. Um realtors might love paying that. They might have no problem at all. I just know when I'm the market I'm going after, the price point I found to work pretty well is 197. 197. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And um, okay, well, I stay with realtors and then I move for the next one. And I have click funnels already. Okay. And uh, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. Stay in the program, go video by video, watch, pause, do. If you ever get confused on anything, go back to that video. Some of the stuff is like, it requires you to just do step by step, but it just go watch, pause, do it anytime you get frustrated, which is part of the process, right? That's what entrepreneurship is. You want yes. to punch your computer screen. Trust me. I'm there every day. I totally understand how it is. That's mm-hmm. th- those are growing pains. Totally normal. Um, just go back, take a walk, stay calm and collective, come back, knock out the video, move on to the next, but just make sure you go and order video from video to video. And I promise you, if you mm-hmm. do that, it should make sense going through. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank awesome. you. You're welcome. Hey, Victoria. Hi. Hi, Blake. Um, Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Um, So I've spent about the last two and a half months setting up all my funnels. I didn't do the whole like traffic and funnel build at the same time. I kind of just focused on the funnels and um, had a lot of fun with that. And now I'm just sort of stalled. So I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and promote more of the DFY, the done for you. Okay. And I'm just trying to think through, like, once I start selling those, what the actual process is going to look like and how much of the work. So I guess my general question is around how much of the work on specific items uh, are part of the, is like your team includes as part of the DFY. And then what certain elements do you require from the client? So I'll go through what exactly I'm referring to. So the first, the first question I have though, so I have a friend who has a cleaning business and she's a realtor. So she could actually use a lead magnet for both of those businesses. Um, am I able to build her lead magnet on my ClickFunnels and then just share the funnel with her once she's ready to subscribe to ClickFunnels? Yes. Okay, cool. Wicked. Um, okay. So then my question around sort of what I'm going to be asking of the client. So there's that initial onboarding um, email or survey that goes out, but 
it doesn't ask a whole lot of information when it comes to sort of their overall business or I don't know, maybe their objectives or their missions and stuff. And so I'm wondering for the story email sequence, how do you go about getting more information from them so that you can tailor that email sequence to a particular client? So that's question number one in regards to the information. And then as far as the lead magnet goes, I had a look at your standalone sales page for the DFY and it says we create your um, the lead magnet graphic. And then on our order page, it was a little bit more obscure and I wasn't sure if it would be a good idea if like if we need to include the creation of the lead magnet or if that would be a separate product or we should just go to the PLR store and grab one there or if your clients will often give you a lead magnet and then it's just a matter of creating the graphic. Okay. Um, and then also how many revisions do you find that clients normally ask for? Do you put, kind of put a cap on revisions? Mm-hmm. And if somebody uses a subdomain, do you set up the subdomain or is that something that they do and then they just give it to you? <laughs> Those are okay. my four. Yeah, no, perfect. Let's start the, you might have to refresh my memory on this. Okay. okay. So the first one is is the form, the complexity of the form. So yes. have, I assume you've got, have you gone through Done For You Plus yet? Yes. Okay. So we're always evolving that form. We actually, our form now is becoming more and more complex because we're learning a lot too. Um, so we will be updating a training inside of Done For You Plus with our new form. Um, we use Google forms. Uh, we would, I would love to use, inc- uh, it's called cognito forms. I just don't want to charge anyone. And it, it's like 35 bucks a month. Um, we're going to make it an option, but with that, it's got so much more functionality. So hang tight with us. We're going to be updating that form really soon. Um, with more of what we've learned from dealing with a ton of these interactions. So, um, that's the best. I don't want to tell you exactly what to do. We have more information on that form. That's going to help you out very soon. That was literally a line item. I was talking with my team like four days ago. So we're going to be updating that training. You're going to get the form's going to change. It's going to give you more questions. So, and it's going to make more sense. Um, Second question was the lead magnet. Was that the one? Yeah. So um, do we, do they normally give you a lead magnet? Like a lot of these people, I'm going after natural paths, say, for example. So they often have some type of resource. Would they just send it my way and I just create the graphic? Or is that a conversation? What does that conversation normally look like with people on your team? So we, part of our form ask, do you already have, a lot of people don't know what a lead magnet is. Um, so we'll explain it because what we're doing now. So inside of Done For You Plus, and, and I'll go more into detail with this is our current structure is, we get on the phone, we, we walk them through the form, they fill out the form and we get, we start, we, we begin on the project. I'm, we're, we're transforming that now to where I'm going to make it uh, almost like a mini course where I'm going to create videos that go through the form. Hopefully if I do this right, any, you, you can use the videos too, right? And I'm going to go question by question explaining what they need to fill out. So sometimes we get customers that are like, Hey, I already know I already have a lead magnet. I, I'm a gym owner. I could offer a free seven day free trial. And they already have an idea what they have. We take that idea and we'll develop their lead magnet form. We'll put it on a box mock-up that we'll get from graphic river. We'll design it for them really simple. And we'll send it back. Some people have no idea what a lead magnet is. So what we do in that case is we kind of talk it out with them. Like, Hey, like, what do you do? What do you have? Um, you know, and we, we start getting, we start getting the ball rolling in terms of inspiring them to think of what is it, what could they offer for free? And we usually come to a conclusion on what that thing is, and then we'll go build it. So regardless, you could use the private label right store. If you want to just, if you want to start quick, we started that when we started, that's what we did the first time we used private label rights because it was the quickest way to get things off the ground. It gives you a nice lead magnet. We might take that lead magnet and just redesign it. So it's in a sexy box mock-up or a coupon or flyer, whatever made sense. Um, so if you're looking for like a quick solution, private label rights is the best. Um, if not, then I would use like graphic river, but all in all, we'll, we'll chat with the customer if they don't have one on coming up with like almost giving like strategic consulting on, Hey, let's think of something you could give away for free. And then we'll go take that idea and turn it into a lead magnet. So that's what we do um, on the call. Okay. Good. That's awesome. So for my, for the people I'm going after, it'll most likely be an actual resource, like an ebook. Um, and so whether or not, so either they'll have something that they can give me and we can talk through whether or not it would be good. And it would be like a sexy thing to give away. Um, and then if it needs to get redesigned or they need something built, that would be separate outside of the done for you. 
Yeah. And most of the time, like if they send you something because of the, like use graphic river to your advantage, like every time, if you use graphic river correctly, when you deliver that back, your client is going to be blown away at, at how that design looks. So even if they send you an ebook, you can even go to them as kind of like a, just a value add. It's like, you know, you know, Hey, Jessica, awesome. Thanks for sending the ebook. Can I go ahead and just give you an idea on a new design and just send it back and see if they, they like it nine times out of 10, they're going to be like, this looks better than my current one. Yes. Thank you so much. Cool. Um, okay. So then do you, so one revision, we get a one revision maximum for our graphics. And that was because you guys got bombarded with I'm assuming that's why, um, (laughs) that's something, is that fair? Is that something that we could, we would offer as a one revision max? We send it all over, they have a look through and then. Yeah. I think offering a revision is always important because again, sometimes designs not always communicate effectively from client to provider. And I think it's fair to always offer a revision, um, on, on any type of done for you thing. Yeah, I'm thinking even just like the story emails because we're going to supply them with the email sequence and it's our take on their business and get, yeah, give them a chance. Exactly. Okay. Um, and then, so then my, my second last question in regards to the subdomain, I was just trying to remind myself in my head. So I set up a subdomain to create a lead magnet. Now, is that something we would just ask the client to do? Either they give us a domain that they've recently purchased for the lead magnet or they go ahead and create a subdomain. And I guess we could send them like the link to the click funnels tutorial on how to do that. And then they supply us with the. Yeah. So what would happen? So when, so here's how the process would work. You would send over the funnel before they had anything, right? Cause you can't create your sub, you can't create any of their domain assets in your account and send that to them. It's not going to work for them, for it to work. What's going to happen is let's say, let's say I'm your client and, and you built my stuff and I'm like, awesome. And you're like, all right, Blake, I'm going to go ahead and send you the share funnel link now. So uh, it's time to get your ClickFunnels account. They, if they click that share funnel link, by the way, I think you'll still get credit, affiliate credit for it. And they can sign up for ClickFunnels right there. I believe, yeah, if, Darren, is that correct? Yeah, so that makes it really easy. You can yeah. say, hey, hey, one-stop shop. You can say, Blake, click this link. You're going to sign up for ClickFunnels and you're also going to get your, your done for you funnel, right? I'm going to click that link. Then you might guide me and go, all right, listen, Blake, Here's how to, you need to hook up your domain to it or your subdomain. And I would just send them the ClickFunnels tutorial um, found in their help doc on how to hook up a, a domain or subdomain. And if you want to know how it works, basically your client's going to say, well, hey, uh, you know, my business is called I'm awesome.com. Um, that, but I, I, they, they can't use I'm awesome.com as a domain. If they're running it outside of ClickFunnels, they would set up a subdomain. Mm-hmm. So just guide them through. I would, I would send them kind of a care package. Like, Hey, here's your link. Click that link. Here's what's, you might even want to send a video. Like, like it could almost, you could almost set up your own landing page that automates this entire process. So you send an email out, they click the link. Um, that link brings them to a share funnel. And then in the email, step two and step two of that share step one, here's your share link. Step two, here's video instructions on what to do next and kind of guide them through that process and make it kind of this warm and fuzzy, like trans white glove delivery transition. And they'll be really impressed. Okay. So from what I understand, you're saying there's two different ways we can deliver their funnel. One is I build it on my click funnels and then I share them the link and then it's their responsibility to hook up the domain or the subdomain because I can't do it and then share it to them. So that would come with some type of videos that you were just saying. So the white glove delivery or option number two is build it on their ClickFunnels account using a sub user um, information. So I would actually log into their ClickFunnels and then I would be able to set up their subdomain because it would be on their ClickFunnels. Correct. Or, or even a hybrid of that. You could build it on yours. Yeah. Send send it to them, have Mm -hmm. them, have them add you as a sub user and then go hook up their domain form. I think that sounds like a good compromise between the two. Great. Okay. So then I think that was it. Thank you very much. You got it. Um, Hey, Martin. Oh, hey, Blake. Um, How are you? Uh, How are you? you Did you get my message today? Um, no, I sent you a message. Oh, I'll go and check. <laughs> uh, so my question is mostly based on the new ad set on Facebook business. Uh, okay. So how, um, you know how the guy who took care of us was talking about, um, we narrowing uh, the people who, who match our niche down. Mm-hmm. Um, so he narrowed it down uh, by countries and by um, 
um, by age, right? So my first question is with the countries. Um, so I'm from Ghana, I'm from Africa. And um, I know of a lot of people who are into the real estate system, which, which I'm going to target on the most. Okay. And um, um, if I narrow it down to United States and um, United Kingdom and Ireland and just uh, a couple of countries, how am I going to reach them? And secondly, I'm 20 and I could find out this and I could involve myself in this. So my next question is, if we narrow the age down to 30, um, how, um, I think I know a couple of people who are, who are investors who have their own businesses who are like 21, 22, 23. So is there any way we can also target us, them too? And my last question is, um, you helped, you told the lady um, who was in the realtor thingy that can narrow it down into realtor. Yes. Is so, that correct? yeah. So with Facebook, you can get as granular as you want. The okay. way you're going to, the way you're going to reach them is it's paid ads, right? If you're going to go that direction. So First off, there's a new ads training being uploaded next week, just so everyone knows. Um, Facebook, because Facebook hates the world and they love to change their interface every, you know, almost seems like every week now. Um, we have to constantly be on top of the ads training. So there will be a new ads training. It will be a lot easier, I promise you, if you're like going through the ads training and you're like, none of this stuff makes sense. It's because Facebook changes all the time. We're going to make sure we update that. That will be in next week. It was supposed to be this week, but ads guy had, he had to run out of town. So next week we'll have a new training in there, but yeah. So what Martin, what you can do, you can get as granular as you want. You can reach all those people. It, sh it just comes down to your targeting. So when you target them um, and you just put money behind it, Facebook will show those ads to those specific people. Okay. So, okay. That's great. So I'm into the Airbnb business, right? Okay. And um, I was trying to narrow myself down into Airbnb so that I can focus more on them. But then whenever I click, uh, I search for Airbnb as my target niche, uh, I, uh, people who match my target niche. Um, it's just say people who are interested in it. There are no job titles and stuff like that. And the man kept um, talking about find people who have their job titles when he was doing the fitness um, trainers and stuff he focused on job titles and never people who are interested just job titles and stuff like that so how can i narrow myself down into real estate and under airbnb like, i would do a little re i would do a little research on google maybe find an interest maybe it's b and b host instead of airbnb so i would see if you could search uh for bed and breakfast host b and b host airbnb host vbr vrbr host I would just do a little research on Google and see if Facebook has a targeted interest based on that as either an interest from someone in terms of a job title or um, if they have it in their description, they, they might, you might find a really unique way that, that Facebook's doing it. I'm unsure of how they're doing it, but if you get a little creative and you take a little time to research on Google, you might find how Facebook categorizes that and then see if you can search it in the, in the interest targeting. Okay. I think that's my question. Thank you. Awesome. You got it. Okay. Awesome. Uh, we're going to do two more guys and we're going to call it a day. I know we've gone 34 minutes over, so I apologize everyone, but we're going to go ahead and do Nancy and then Esperanza. We're going to end with you. So Nancy, you can unmute your mic and ask away. Much better that way. Hey Nancy. <laughs> I have a really quick question. Okay. I have a couple and I've sent them into support and I never get my questions answered from support. Yeah, that's, it's a, don't worry. It's so what's happening. I want everyone to make sure that they watch the support training. Um, our support answers extremely, extremely fast. The problem is the email that goes out to inform you that your question has been answered sometimes ends up in spam or promote promotions. And and everyone thinks that we're not responding. I, I trust me, I am on top of it. I go in personally and look at every message that when this instant occurs, they are on top of it. So in order to make sure your tickets are getting responded, every time you ask a question, especially with priority support that you have here, your question will probably be answered in like within an hour. So make sure you watch the tra training called 
how to get 24 hour support. It shows you how to log into your tickets to see your answers. So I think that's a big hiccup is sometimes those emails show up in spam and, you know, customers are like, or members are like, Blake, it's been four days and no one's responding to me. They, they probably responded within 20 minutes, but because that email is not sending, you're not getting notified to go check your ticket. So rule of thumb, if anytime anyone reaches out to priority support, I would just check back within like an hour or two, it's probably going to be answered. Okay. So that will, that will help. That, that, that's been like a big thing we're trying to work on. It's more of an email service provider thing, trying to show up in the inbox, but it, well, it's hard working with them. I figured since none of them had been answered, that it had to be something I was doing. Yeah, um, go ahead and log, go. To, there's a training called how to get 24 hour support. Make sure you log into your tickets. If you can't log in, reach out to us again and just tell them to send you an email. Okay. And they'll, they'll email you. All right. So, but if I just go into spam, that'll help. Okay. Yeah, it could be in spam. It could be in promotions. It could be getting blocked by your IP. It's just all sorts of reasons. Okay. I have a question on, when I got my graphics back, there's one graphic that I just cannot handle okay how is it what, what's wrong with it well i'm such a pain in the neck it is <laughs> fine <laughs> it's the graphic that goes with the the bonus number two okay under the mastermind it looks like something it, my niche is life coaching okay and that looks like something that would come from, that would work with either a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Okay. And that requires different licensing. And what came through is, does not counter, does not work at all with what I do. So I just need them to change the, the picture. Okay. So do you, have you, did you receive, so when you download your custom graphics, that email that was sent to you, do you remember that email? I remember it and I know I have it somewhere. I just have to find it. Okay, inside of that email, there's a link where you can make a revision and just let them know what's going on and they'll, they'll revise it for you. Well, I, I don't know how to revise it, but I'm sure they do. Yeah, they're, they're gonna handle, we're, our team's gonna handle it all for you. Okay. The other thing that happened is I ordered, a, I, I paid for a logo from um, Fiverr. Okay. It's, it's a lovely logo, except it has so much white space, which means it's adding immense amounts of space to what I don't think needs to be immense amounts of white Got space. It. So um, go, who go to the logo designer. Okay. And th say this to them, write this down, say, Hey, or hi, or hello. However, <laughs> I'm always a gay guy. <laughs> um, hey, um, can you please send me a P N G version of this logo? I do have that. That's the, that's the version you want to upload. Um, and if it's, if, is that, if that's still giving you an issue, it's because they need to crop it. So yeah, I, I couldn't figure out normally I could crop it, but I can't crop. There. Yeah. They need, they need to slice it. Tell them, just say, can you please remove all of the extra space? They need, they need to, what's called, they need to slice it for you. Yeah. Um, so just, just tell them, can you please remove the extra space around the logo? Okay. And they'll yeah. know, they should know exactly what to do. Yeah, it, it's a lovely logo. It just I, happens to us all the time where we, we get this like logo, but like we insert it and it takes up this much space. Yeah. Whole, whole bar across the top yep. of the bar. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what you're going through. They'll be able to fix that up for you. Those, I have. Oh. Can you send me to the best place? I already have 
ClickFunnels on ClickFunnels. And the instructions I got with this program are not quite the same as the ones I got with Anthony Morrison and whoever the others. Is there a particular place to go or will that, these are all questions I ask support. Will they be able to direct me? It's very confusing to me. What, what's the issue? Well, the issue is, see if I can read my notes. Um, my domain is ultimate life coaching lead generator. Okay. Big long one. And um, if I do a www, that makes the ultra lead yada yada a subdomain. Right? Does that make sense? WWW is technically considered a subdomain. So if, are you hosting anything on that domain you just said? Just what I am doing with Blake Newbar. Okay. So you should be fine. That That's all you need to worry about. If you ever want to host any, that domain can be used for every funnel in your account. To, even if you want a totally different business, it can be used. You would just change that page path which I teach you how to do in the program. Now, if you want a totally separate business that's tied away from it, you would want either a subdomain of it, which is like, you know, um, go dot ultimate lead generator, right? Or whatever you have, or something in front of that, you can do a subdomain or just pick a totally new domain. Well, the, the other domain I have, which would work is um, the dance of life. Okay. Com. Oh, densoflifebiz.com. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just whatever domain you want to put it on, uh, you, you it will work. Doesn't really matter. Do, yeah. Whatever, whatever domain you want, when someone types in whatever domain you want, they'll land on your lead machine. So whatever domain they type in, they probably won't even be typing it in. They'll be clicking buttons and links, but whatever yeah. you want that link to say, right? That's the domain you want to put your entire online business on, your entire weed machine business. Okay. Well, that's, that's kind of where I was. And then I, I've just gone back and forth till I've driven myself nuts. Yeah, I do it too. Don't worry. Um, you just pick a domain, <laughs> just pick a domain and roll with it. You can always change it later if you need to. All righty. Okay. Thank you very much. You got it. Hey, Esperanza. Okay, uh, yes, my question, um, it was um, like about a year ago, somebody invited me to join your um, your program. And okay. I remember that they were telling me that the price, the cost is gonna be $739 and $997. So that $997 is for the Do It For You Plus? I don't even remember what they were trying to sell me. It was just offer and it was $739,997. So $797 is the cost of Done For You Plus, which comes free with this program. The 3D animation cost is $597. That comes free with this program. Those are being sold uh, as is. Mm -hmm. You get those for free. Ah, okay, okay. I was just thinking that the offer from before. Yeah. Th so those, those are being sold right now. Those are on the marketplace right now for those prices. Mm -hmm. You get that inside of this program. D don't jump to, I wouldn't jump to it yet. Just go in order and mm -hmm. they will come up when you, when you get to them. When I get there. Yeah. Okay. And one more thing. I have my funnels already. Okay. And I just upload the funnel they send me and, um, but my funnel has one name, nothing to do with what I have already because I have a lead, mag uh, lead magnet in there. It's like, I'm gonna have like two accounts or how is gonna be this? No, one account, one ClickFunnels account, and you can have as many funnels in that, you can have up to 20 funnels in that, that account, you'll never need 20 funnels. Um, but no, when you click the, when the, when our team delivers the funnel to you and you click that link, it will import it into your account. 
That's the funnel you want to work from. And then we're also going to send you your custom graphics to plug into the funnel as well. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And um, in this funnel, is there a way, because I'm going to be working for realtors, is there a way that I can give them like a landing page? Yeah, when you or go through- that what we're giving? It, it all comes in the masterclass. So inside of the masterclass, they will get all those assets if they purchase. Ah, uh, okay. And they're going to build it. The masterclass that you sell to uh -huh. your realtors mm -hmm. teaches them how to build everything. I show them step by step how to build the entire system. Ah, uh, okay. okay. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about a thing. Ah, uh, okay. So they can see what I have already. I can show them like I have one for short sale. And I'm building another one that is for sellers. Uh -huh. So they, I can show them what I have and it's something similar that they're going to build for their own funnel, right? Yeah. What you show them, what if they buy from you, they'll know exactly how to set this entire thing up. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. So they will do it, the whole thing. They will do it. And yeah. And then when you get to the Done For You Plus program towards the end of this training, mm -hmm. I will show you how you can do it for them if you want to. You might get some realtors, Esperanza, that are like, hey, this is great. I love it. I just don't have any time to do it. I show you or I show you how to teach someone to set it up for them and charge premium prices. Okay, I want to get there. That will come. Yeah, don't worry. Go in order. Trust me on this. I know you want, it's, it's, it's tempting to jump around. Set up, your, set up your core funnel and then you'll enroll in what's called the DFY Plus program. It's towards the end after you're done setting up the, acceler the accelerator program, jump in there and go through that. And that will show you how to bolt on your last product to your funnel where you can do it for them. Okay. And I will charge the 997, right? Or higher. I, I charge 1497. You could, I, there's people charging 597. We have some people charging $2,000. It really depends on what you want to charge. Okay. But in the basic, I have to go this, the 739, 199, right? Yeah, and then your last one will be the big one, which comes okay, towards the end just, of the trip. It's like a debate, right? Yeah, so the seven dollars is low value. It's it's high value, low price introductory uh -huh. offer. You're gonna bring them through that funnel. You're gonna set this whole thing up, and then I'm gonna teach you how to set up the service part of it, where you can go in and do it for them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Victoria. Okay, real quick. So you'd mentioned that Facebook keeps changing and it reminded me that I guess about a month ago on one of the accelerated calls, I asked Darren or anybody else if they noticed that their feature photo got removed. Yeah. Is that something that anybody's talked about with you? My yeah. people, my, okay, so what, exactly. what do you got to say about that? <laughs> I, I have no idea what Facebook is doing. Don't stress it. Okay. Uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, as long as you have everything else optimized. The main thing people are quick, we've tested it. The main thing people click is that link in your description and the cover photo. I'm mostly thinking just for the DFY because it'll just be something I'll have to say. Oh, by the way, Facebook has, if you don't have that feature anymore, like I can upload some weird story photo. It gives yeah. me like the story. Yeah, I think I'm going to update the training too to account for that because I still have my feature. I just think yeah. if, I, if I remove it, they're probably going to. Right. You won't be able to happen. put it back. <laughs> I'll probably, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll probably update the training and, um, and because there's ways to utilize those stories that are probably better than the featured. I'll, right. I'll, probably, I'll just create the training on how to do that. So it adds to the done for you. But in terms of your customer, the story is really powerful because people can click that. And basically that can be utilized as, as real estate space. So when someone clicks it, it's like a theme, right? You know, Instagram, you can have the little icons below that are like, Instagram does a great job of it. Facebook, they might be following that model with it. Cause if you go to my story right now, it's all like test, it's a bunch of testimonials. There's a way that your client can utilize that in terms of their business. So that if instead of the feature photo, we'll now do story driven stuff and we'll do a bunch of different ones that they can click. I actually think it's more powerful. I just haven't shot any new content for it yet, but yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what Facebook's doing with the featured photo. Half the people still have them. Half of them don't. It's like what they did with their profile. They roll, They took the, the new Facebook profile, took over a year to roll out. So I don't know if they're going to bring it back. I don't know if they're going to take it away, but regardless, there's always a way to navigate. And I actually kind of like the story approach better, to be honest. What is the approach though? Because what I can understand is just the actual dimensions of the photo are the story dimensions, or is it an actual feature story? Yeah. So, so you, you can do multiple ones. So 
there's going to be a way where I can actually go in and train and each one can be a thing. Like if I was, if I was a chiropractor, my first one might be like, um, uh, patient results. My second story might be like, um, adjustments, right. Where they can, if you watch, I watch TikTok a lot to see the adjustments. There's just something that's alluring, alluring to me about it. You just see them crack the neck and stuff. Like they could actually do all the different things. And in the training, I'll teach them how to do it. But each one you click, it's just, it rattles off different pictures or videos of that topic. Okay. So it's a story photos. It's not videos in the feature. It's just photos. I think it's photos. I don't know if it's, it could be video. I just oh, have, okay. I have I'll, I'll video. check it out. Cool. cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Vanessa. Hi. How are so, you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, so I was gone for days and I'm sorry, Darren, I completely forgot your answer. I know I asked this before. So I was gone for days and when I, when I came back, everything was all different. And so I'm even more confused, uh, more confused than ever. Um, everything, so, everything's still in order. The layout might have changed. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm about to start with that again. But my question is, um, and, and I know, Darren, I'm sorry. I, I know I asked you this. And I, like I said, I forgot. I, I have a bad memory. But um, the seven to 10 days, um, it's gone there now. It's on the number three. When you um, apply for a ClickFunnels affiliate, you have to wait for seven to 10 days. And I don't know what's going on with that. Um, how can I check? Uh, I have no idea what's going on. So go now. into whenever you applied, it should be seven, seven to 10 days. Those I reshot those videos to make it easier. Go into your, um, at the top right of your ClickFunnels account, you'll see like your avatar. You can hover over it, click on affiliates. And when you click on affiliates from that drop down in your ClickFunnels account, you're going to click on the button that says log in to your account or log into your dashboard. And that blue button should be, should appear. If it hasn't appeared, it just means they haven't approved you yet. Um, reach out to our support if it's been over 10 days and we'll push ClickFunnels a little bit to approve. Okay. It's been over 10 days. So it's, sh it should be there, right? The blue. It should be there. If it's not, there's a video. So go into inside of the accelerator program, I believe section two after register. Um, there's, there's new additional click funnel affiliate videos. Um, check, check them out. If you follow those videos and you still don't see your button appear, reach out to priority support and we'll make sure we, uh, we get that taken care of for you. The blue button. Okay. What, what does it say on the blue button button? What, what does it supposed to say? It will what say like, I like click. Here. I can't, ex I can't remember the verbiage okay. exactly. I'll just it in the training though, I, I screen share exactly what it says. Okay. And also, thank you, Blake. And also um, the, the click funnel. So I signed up probably almost two weeks ago and I know that's like 14 day trial. So I'm probably getting charged now. So um, what am I supposed to do with that? It's on the step-by-step too, right? I'm sorry if this is this question is dumb. No, 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 you're fine. Yeah, that's just the cost of the software. It's, they charge about it's like it's in general, it's like three dollars a day to run your business. Make sure you're on yeah. the ninety-seven dollar plan. You do not need to be on the two ninety-seven. So just yeah. make sure before they charge you because sometimes sometimes people get caught on the two ninety-seven. If you want, you get a lot more value for it, but you don't need it. I want we want to make this program as as literally to run a business for ninety-seven dollars a month is unheard of, and we want to find a way to do that. So and make sure you're on the $97 a month plan. You can do that in the billing section of your account. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to use that? Um, it's, it's on the step-by-step, -step, right? Because I have no idea how to use that thing. So after now that I'm on um, $97 per month um, plan, I was like, okay, so what am I going to do this? What am I so going to do? That's, that's going to host your whole business. So okay. that's just the cost to run the software for them to send the emails, for them to host your entire business, for them to host your membership area, to like for them to basically run your business for you online. So all you have to do is market it. They, they just charge that. So as you go through the program, uh, I don't know how far you've been through on the program, um, but as you continue to go through the program, you'll notice we work with ClickFunnels a lot, a lot to host all of our videos, for the landing page to work properly, all that stuff. 
It's okay. basically like a, it's like a hosting cost, but for marketing. So it got, it, it, it's not like a Wix or a Squarespace where you just pay for hosting. It comes with a lot of the marketing benefits, which is like the one click upsells and the ability to process payments, all these different things that they provide. We want to make it a one-stop shop. Like in my business now I have like, I couldn't even tell you how, how much software I have, but I wanted to find a way to where you didn't need all that software. It was just one software mm-hmm. does everything. So okay. it, it will make more sense as you continue through the program. I probably should do my logo first. I think I haven't even done that. It's okay. Go and order video from video. Uh, your brain's going to tell you to jump around and skip around. Trust me, don't do it. Go and order from video to video. And I promise when you do that, by the time you're done, you're going to look back and your entire business is going to be done. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. No problem, Vanessa. <laughs> All right. I think Martin, you are the last one. We'll end with you. We've gone double the time, which I hope everyone's okay with. Um, sometimes I just can't help myself. What's up, Martin? Uh, I'm going to be right quick. So um, okay. Thank, um, thanks to Darren. I got to know about the affiliates marketing with you, um, um, promoting your business to other people to get um, a share. Uh, before you start a business. So I'm a kind of person who like actually talk one-on-one to people and I'm pretty good in convincing people one-on-one. Huh. So even right now, even um, before I, got, I jumped into this call, I could tell one of my friends that about this program and did a little summary and they wanted to know more about it. So okay. is there any way I can get a quick link? And um, I mean, Darren told me about how to get the link, but I'm just saying, is there any way I can get a quick setup link and send it to them so that I can get a quick share for uh, basically, is there a way to get a link to your online business that's up and running? Yes. Without uh, a I mean, uh, to, for the, just the affiliate marketing for just um, uh, so that when they log into your program, I'll be the referral. I don't know oh, you, yes. yeah. We're so we are, our affiliate program is going under some undergoing some changes right now. Um, go ahead and apply and then reach out to support about it. We're not accepting anyone new, but you know, I'll bend the rules. Just don't tell anyone on me. Um, um, yeah, we're just, we're just going through, we're revamping everything, making it, but you know, just we're making it better. So we we're not accepting anyone right now, but if you want to promote it, um, just reach out to support, let them know, let them know you're in the accelerator and, and for them to grant you access, but they'll send you back a link to apply. And then you're going to have to reach back out and just let them know, Hey, I applied, approve me. Blake said it was cool. Okay. All right. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Well, you guys have been amazing per usual. It's been a blast to, uh, um, spend a lot of time with you guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, this is, so, uh, Friday, March, I think. Yeah. Next call will be in April month from today. Obviously you have Darren, you will be hanging out with Darren a lot. He's a rock star. He's going to guide you guys on any questions you may have. And then obviously we're going to be meeting every month. So pumped to be with you guys. You guys, I look forward to these calls every single month. I have so much fun. You can tell I always find a way to go over an extra hour um, because you guys are awesome to hang out with. So other than that, hope you guys have an amazing rest of the day. Keep crushing it. Keep pushing forward. And I will see you guys next month. Thanks, Blake. See you guys. Have a good one. Yeah, thanks.